A Murder at the End of the World, Season 1, Episode 5. Thoughts? This episode is called Chapter 5, Crypt. So, spoilers for these first five episodes. Another episode I love. Let's dive right in. So, uh, hold on. Yes, we... We open on Darby, you know, yeah, realizing that Zoomer must be Bills, and she hugs him, and I like this thing that, like, you know, the kid, you know, briefly asked, after asks, why are you being so weird? But, yeah, you know, he's, he's five, he has loving parents, he understands, oh, you know, this is hugging time, you know, that's, even though they don't, know each other that well and let's see yeah she in flashback she smells bill and in the present smells zoomer yeah it's it is indeed a little weird and yeah she notes they have a lot of morphine there and yeah she points out you know she's not worried about the um, concussion she's worried about whether she'll be able to survive this place you know this episode really shows yeah Darby you know <clears throat> Darby's refusal to let go and to to like yeah, accept limitation, you know, is a, a character flaw. She really can't, yeah, she can't let go if she really feels and that something is extremely important. And yeah, you know, she's risking actual, like, brain injury. Let's see, yeah, and, um... Darby confronts Andy, and, yeah, he points out Lee reads to Zoomer about King Arthur, and Andy wants Zoomer to be King Arthur via the augmented reality. And, yeah, points out, you know, the only reason he hasn't told Lee that he's sterile is that, you know, his his own vanity. And I really do love the point, you know, Zoomer is my son in every way that counts, which, absolutely accurate, uh, you know, we, we have to get to a place where we don't worry so much about if someone is genetically related, you know, we, we have to foster, well, fostering children, adopting children. And let's see. Uh, yeah, and, you know, he points out, you know, this is not about Bill. He, you know, he feels confident that it's about himself, which, you know, people like that, tech billionaires, do tend to think everything, you know, the world... The universe revolves around them. And let's see. Um, oh, right, yeah. The um, So, yeah, Andy is this episode's Darby research partner. I appreciate the, the I, I don't think it was the most, like, it seemed, I don't mind the joke, it just felt weird to place it here, but the fact that they, you know, that so this is your nod to privacy, you know, the fact that that's, like, someone taking a dump, I, I didn't think that really needed to be there, but I do appreciate this point about, yeah, like, <laughs> If not for that bit of, like, software programming, yeah, he could, you know, he could be watching people in in their most private moments. 
you know, the technology exists, it's important that we're very careful to be ethical in how we use that technology. You know, not that that exact thing exists and is used everywhere, but, you know, the, yeah, the show is putting forth the point that hypothetically, you know, <clears throat> and yeah, it is very important that we don't allow powerful people to create a, uh, what's the word, a surveillance state. And... Right, and, and yeah, he talks about, you know, he's, you know, Andy is undergoing life extension, you know, stuff, which, yeah, that is, you know, reminds me of that one guy, um, I, I don't remember his name, um, Let's see, I think it was Brian something, yeah, uh, Br Brian Johnson, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, he's trying to, to keep, yeah, basically live forever. And, let's see, yeah, yeah, anti-aging project blueprint. So, yeah. It's, it's very much like that, and I actually, yeah, um, <clears throat> uh, let's see, yeah, I appreciate them bringing that up. I hope it's going somewhere. Um, so far, a lot of the stuff that they've brought up hasn't really ended up, you know, coming to a... Um, a conclusion so much as that yeah they they bring stuff up and let's see yeah they point out you know at 11:59 the the system updated and that's when it happened so it's someone who knows about the security protocols and yeah um every murder mystery needs a good alibi check bit and here it's accomplished via LiDAR. I, I quite appreciate the, yeah, the show keeps coming up with these, like, very current, very, you know, sometimes tech-charged versions of tropes from, like, Agatha Christie-style murder mysteries. <clears throat> and... Let's see... David calls Darby an NPC, which he's making some very interesting, like, comparisons. He was the one who, who said, it's not Lord of the Fucking Flies. Which is slightly amusing, because fly fucking, I don't know if that's also, like, in, in English, you know, but... Here in Denmark, the the word fly fucking basically means being pedantic. So anyway, but yeah, you know, I've I watched that scene and I was like, how is this like Lord of the Flies? You know, I think he was talking about like, oh, Darby wants to investigate the this murder, you know, or this this death at least, you know, before the police get there and like, I mean, I, yeah, I I don't. I don't know if it's on purpose or if it's just me being dense or what, but David seems to make some some comparisons that, yeah. Let's see. And cuz I mean the thing with like NPC, well, some NPCs are really important though. Like I I get, you know, NPC, yeah, you know, you don't play as an NPC, but that doesn't mean that they can't be extremely important. So I, yeah, I, I don't know if he's, if it's on purpose that they're having him make these statements that seemingly don't completely make sense. Um, yeah, and David refuses to talk further without, you know, his, his lawyer present, Mark. So they can question Mark, I guess. And yeah, 
Oliver is questioned, and he very freely, I, I don't know, I get maybe he's proud of his poll, I guess. He's like, oh, we were doing it, like, 100%, you know. And I, I kind of like the thing that, like, they don't even mention the fact that this is, like, same sex. Like, like he doesn't say, what, you, th you think rich people can't be gay? You think I can't be gay or something? You know, no, the thing he brings up is the fact that he's disabled. And that is, that's also something that we, we have to get better at, like, being comfortable with the fact that, yeah, you know, disabled people have sex, elderly people have sex, you know, just because you're not young, conventionally attractive, and able-bodied doesn't mean you're not, like, you know, some, not everyone does have sexual urges, but you, you, you're you not necessarily not going to have sexual urges just because you're not young, conventionally attractive, and able-bodied. So, yeah, I, I quite appreciate <clears throat> that note. And let's see. Um, yeah, and, you know, Lume brings up, you know, she's basically saying, well, you know, my smart cities do the, the thought crime, you know, predictive analysis thing. Maybe we should have had that here. Which, you know, yeah. Um, I disagree that it's, you know, racist to note. Yeah, that is the kind of thing that someone who works with Chinese, like, the Chinese government is, you know, that's that's not a, that's not an anti-Asian thing to say. It is a fact that the Chinese government, you know, has, has very, it, like, thorough surveillance of its citizens. But yeah, it's a, it's a good, it's a very credible element that, you know, in this situation, someone who works on that would be like, well, look, we, we do need it, kind of thing. <clears throat> and let's see, then we, yeah, and yeah, Andy is told, you know, Poor Marius, he's he's just, this entire episode, he's delivering bad news and telling people stuff they don't want to hear, and getting shouted at. Like, he's just doing it. Poor guy. I, I hope he has a therapy session with Ray. Probably needs it. But, but yeah, you know, he tells, you know, Andy, they know, and, you know, he's, well, who told? I don't know, well, who do you think told? So, yeah. He doesn't need clear evidence. He's just like he he wants some kind of response to that. And then Darby tells Lee, you know, Zoomer is Bills and your husband is sterile. I just yeah. I I kind of do I really respect Darby's not necessarily like she's the She's the audience surrogate, and she's clearly a, a very capable detective. But, like, she does some things that are really messed up. This is not appropriate behavior. You know, you can't just tell someone... Like, if if she said to Andy, I really think you should tell Lee this, you know, that's, like... That's how you go about this sort of thing. But to just tell Lee... Like, I get... To be clear... I'm not saying that it's right for her to not know. You know, for five years she's been raising a child she thought was fathered by her current husband. And, and you know, only now does she realize, because that does change things. You know, it doesn't mean that that's not Andy's kid. You know, that the, it is still, you know, he, he makes the point, that, you know, software, you know, Bill provided the hardware, I provide the software, the software is what matters. You know, how you raise a kid is extremely important, and there's a lot of parents who are much, much better at raising the the kid who are not the birth parents, you know. But it's not right to keep that from Lee, but this way of handling it is is also not appropriate. So, so yeah, I, I do really appreciate it. I, I 
like when the protagonist in a story is not just this, like, basically, you know, I, I don't think they have to be a good person. I, I think an interesting a-hole, an interesting asshole is more compelling to watch than someone who's just a good person. And I realize, you know, I've said in some of my videos talking about, like, superhero comic adaptations and such, that it's important for the, the protagonist to be good. That's because these are stories that tell us how to be. So it's important for the hero, unless it's specifically an anti-hero or even a villain. Anyway, moving on. Um, let's see, that brings us... So yeah, and Darby looks at Lee's stuff, including the, the passport... And again, like, yeah, she's just, she can't let go because she had time. The editing makes clear she could have put it back down, but she can't let go, you know. And it is this thing, like, later when she's confronted by the actual killer, you know, the, the computerized voice says, at the, um, was it, at the end of this maze, you will not find Bill, you know, because that's the thing, she can't. She spent her life trying to solve murders, and now it actually happened to someone she knew personally, you know. So, yeah, very, very nicely done with the... And, and yeah, it's, it's really no wonder that Lee and Andy are upset with Darby after that. <clears throat> and for a second, it sounded like they were going to lock her in the room, and I guess that probably was Todd's... Yeah, I don't think he was supposed to give the ring back. I think they were trying to lock her in the room. Anyway, um, and yeah, so uh, Todd beat his... So yeah, um, when he was younger, I think, a kid or teenager or something like that, his brother drowned... You know, and it was this thing of the, the other boys did it because he was making crowns out of flowers. So, you know, homophobia, uh, which I, I really, that's, some, that's something I really respect. The show is not afraid to bring up, you know, we've, it's, it's talked about misogynistic attacks. It's, you know, right from the, like, there's stuff of that. Some of, some of that is brought up very early in the first episode. And, you know, yeah, homophobia and, and those kinds of attacks. Like, I don't think there's been any victim blaming so far. It's a show that brings up, you know, murder and, and death and such. And it points out that it's often bigotry. It's not necessarily, you know, it's, it's yeah. And that's another thing, you know, we, we got to get away from, from victim blaming. <clears throat> when something bad happens, we try to figure out why the person who did it did it and how we can prevent that sort of thing you know from from happening again not not blaming the victim for it but but yeah so he you know he found out he beat every boy there to within an inch of his life and you know tells her i respect revenge and dedication and yeah hands her the ring and, yeah, I feel bad for, so the actor's names, Louis Kanselmi, and, yeah, I'm sorry, the moment that he started saying that, you know, you look at his face, it's like, yeah, I 100% believe, honestly, I, I, I kind of figured <laughs> that he had done something, and I feel bad for it, because it's like, it's genetics, you know, he didn't, he didn't choose that face. But, yeah, he just, he, I'm going to stop talking now, um, before you cancel me. And, yes, so the, that's a joke about his last name. I realized that, yeah, cancel culture. You know what, instead of me getting into the weeds, the, you know, everything that I have to say about it was said really, really well by... Cody Johnston in that episode of Some More News, which literally has cancel culture in the video title. Anyway, uh, let's 
see, that brings us to... Yeah, and she, yeah, she sniffs some Adderall, and they use the, the f like, filter of visual, you know, to make clear she is dizzy, she is pushing herself too far. And, you know, yeah, she, she talks to the mirror, and I would give anything for Mirror Darby to, like, reach out and, and grab her and be like, the love of our life just died. Does that sound fine? And, yeah, she's attacked by the killer, and it's such a great, again, like, this is the kind of thing where, you know, they would have something covering their mouth, so their voice kind of changes, and it's like, oh, I, you know, I heard them speak, but they, their voice, I can't place it, you know, but here, it's literally, like, it's a text-to-speech thing, you know, very clever, so, so, yeah, we have no idea who it is, and, yeah, there's, again, the tech twist to the Agatha Christie trope, and, well, maybe not Agatha Christie, but, you know, classic, murder mystery kind of thing and yeah we get an explanation as to what on earth she meant about the the dead talk to me and yeah he's like so when did you first know you were in love with me and she's like I, oh, this is, you know. and he's like okay here's the, you know three I, I would like to start my three-part explanation and when she does not reciprocate, he's feeling kind of overlooked. You know, he's he's like the the yeah, and and yeah, he talks about the the tech addiction, and he feels you know it's it's changing people. And then she makes the really solid point: the first time I knew I was in love with you was over the phone. You know, which I, I really do appreciate that they are challenging. Earlier, Oliver also said, you know, I didn't kill Bill Farah. I did think he was kind of a hypocrite. It's easy to be a Luddite when you're able-bodied uh, white. And did he also mention cis? But, you know, so, uh, straight, some, something like that. You know, he pointed out that, that privilege, which, yeah, you know, people who... Are not able-bodied. It's not so easy for them to to go without technology, you know. So so that's a, a really good point. And I've said it before. I'll probably say it again. You know, it's not something you can really plan for. Like everything else, all matters of love. You can't really plan for it. But falling in love via technology, falling in love with someone without being like literally in the same physical location like i've i've fallen in love you know the the first woman i fell in love with yeah we fell in love over text messages uh, like she knew what i looked like because i had sent her some of the embarrassing old short films that i made she i did not know what she looked like and yeah you know we were in love for years and, you know, the, the second girl I was with, you know, yeah, we, we fell in love in person. And, you know, yeah, like, both are good, but I realize, you know, a lot of people today don't fall in love with someone without knowing what they look like. And I just, I really think it's underrated. It's just, it's, yeah, it's difficult to make happen today because usually if you're, you know, trying to get with someone, it's probably on some sort of dating app. It, or, unless it's in person, I mean. And dating apps, I'm told, you know, there is a, a bias towards, you know, the people who are conventionally attractive in, in the photos they share, you know, those are the ones that get the most responses. And the, you know, there's this running joke. I don't know how large a percentage, you know, it might be a problem, I don't know. But there's a there's this you know running joke in, in various media about you know oh they lied in the in the profile they maybe even showed a picture of someone other than themselves in their dating profile kind of thing you know so but it's you know no it's a it's a wonderful way to to fall in love <clears throat> 
and I, I do acknowledge that's not technically what happened here. I, you know, she said the first time she fell in love was over the phone. She found out what he looked like shortly after they first met, so it wasn't it wasn't without having seen each other. And I acknowledge it's definitely different. You know, there's visual cues that, you know, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, we see we see Sean did indeed survive into this episode, though she dies later. So technically counts as, you know, there's, I think, yeah, um, the first four episodes, technically someone dies. And let's see, Sean, episode one, it was Bill. Um, and one of the episodes, it was Farrah. Huh. I guess maybe there is one episode where no one died. I f Has anybody else died? I really hope I'm not forgetting some really important... And anyway, but yeah. Um, let's see. And... Um, yeah. Uh, Sean says, you know, and he loves Zoomer. What about Lee? I don't know what Lee loves. I used to think it was money. You know, I used to think Lee was with Andy for the money that, you know, as long as, you know, yeah, there, there's a fund in Zoomer's name. And as long as Lee is with Andy, technically that money, you know, is partially hers. So, yeah, and that is the thing. Like, it really... It, it continues to be a mystery, and, and maybe they'll resolve it before the end of the run. Why exactly? What is it that Lee sees in Andy? Because there definitely does seem... It's it's not completely obvious. Let's see. And, and Sion's heart stops, and, you know, yeah, like... Imagine being Ava. She's like, I was gone for like two minutes. What the? We managed to save her life and keep her alive for all these hours despite this, you know, intense situation. <laughs> How did the, you know, what did you do? You know, and, and Darby's just standing there with the, the glass of water and it's like, I mean, I guess I might as well drink it now. Is that rude? Is it wrong for me to drink? The water that's it's not doing her any good is all I'm saying and let's see. then we have the uh, oh right right yeah um Andy asks Darby why is it that everywhere you go death follows and this is actually something I can explain for a while, she would just show up where Death was already like, well, bring him in, boys. He's you know he's going to the underworld. Oh, hey, Darby. It's just a matter of time before you got here, I guess. And and yeah, for you know after a while, they just they started hanging out. Now Death follows her. You know, just you can't plan for these sorts of things. And yeah, they they. They sit and and remember Sean, and one of them says, "You know, the moon, you know, going to the moon will make a believer out of anyone." Something Sean said, and I I quite like the point about you know, the first person who lights a, a fire in an unusual place is a lunatic, but the next person is the second adopter. You know, and and yeah, it's it's so very true. There's so many times throughout history where yeah, if like if not enough people do a thing, and it's like unusual compared to what the the group does, yeah, the the group is going to be like, what, what are you doing? You have we have to all be on the same page here, and yeah, if enough people agree to do it, yeah, you end up with, you know, maybe it ends up being a new religion or or just, like, ritual of some kind. And I, I quite appreciate the, the point about, you know, this is like Noah's Ark's timeshare for rich people. 
and let's see. Yeah, Oliver has some great lines here. And um, what? Um, oh, right, right. Yeah, back in the in the flashback, um, they yeah, <clears throat> you know, uh, Darby found E.B. and this is of course we already know that this leads to Darby and Bill confronting the the killer in in the house and. Right, I really appreciate the the point that I forget if we knew this already, uh, but you know, yeah, the point that the serial killer used to be a cop, but he couldn't control his anger. You know, he would he once he was fired for firing his gun in you know a, a situation where it wasn't appropriate, and yeah, um, him being fired from being a cop didn't mean he wasn't violent, it just meant his violence you know, was turned against his, you know, his domestic partner. This is sadly something we've seen a lot of times in real life. And again, it's something we really have to have to deal with. You know, and, and one of the yeah, some something one thing that's necessary to do is of course gun control that says that you cannot own a gun if you have been uh, what's the word uh, if you've been um, convicted of like uh, spousal abuse for example because that's a major predictor oh, crap now I'm sounding like Lume um, but but yeah that sort of thing um, you know if if you Un unless you like prove that you have made significant progress you know and yeah you know he points out are you are you on something and she admits yeah I'm you know I I'm on some some Adderall and yeah they they start arguing and you know yeah there, a fire was was started. She wasn't, you know, quite careful enough. And <clears throat> uh, let's see. There was a th uh, yeah, yeah. You know, she she points. You know, yeah. She expresses. You know, if we don't, you know, catch this guy, it's like we're okay with it. You know, every you know, there's there's so many murdered women, and and we're you know the this country, this world is a mass grave, and nobody gives a fuck. You know, that's how it feels to her, and and yeah, you know, of course, since she was a teenager, her father has been taking her to all these murder, you know, I suppose not all of them were murdered, all of these these uh, death. Crimes. What, what? Yeah, she's seen all these all these dead bodies, so she can't really think about anything else. And she she feel you know she 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 feels like it, essentially it's up to her personally to to completely deal with this. You know she needs <clears throat> she needs to get better at reaching out and you know building community or taking part in community uh, uh, that dang dad just did an excellent video about this exact topic I'm gonna put it in the description box uh, let's see the the right here. yeah building community to goatees in conversation you know because it absolutely it it is a it is difficult, but it is also necessary, and it's it's healthy. What she's doing is not healthy, and the show is not in denial about that. And I really appreciate that. Let's see, so there we go. I'm gonna copy it in immediately. There. Um. Yeah, you know, cause like, 
It's a, it's a very, very clear... I'm not sure any character actually says the words out loud, but you don't need to when there's a fire. She literally... Like, she didn't mean to clearly, because she freaks out the moment she realizes it, but she was not careful enough around fire. You know, the, the room... Part, part of the room catches fire. This is a... You know, it's a... It's a great visual metaphor for, you know, she is out of control, basically. And, let's see, yeah, and, and back in the, in the present, you know, she talks to, to Ray and says, you know, everything hurts, which, you know, that's, that's the sequel to the, to the R.E.M. song. And, you know, I appreciate that they point out, you know, she realizes it's kind of weird that I'm getting, I'm, I'm, you know, my therapist is an, you know, what was it, alternative intelligence, you know, but, yeah, he points out, well, you know, we've had these kinds of, we've had therapy AIs since, what was it, 1967 or something, you know, we are great listeners. Let's see, and then the the i want to say it's the like the light blinks in morse code you know saying i know why david called bill uh, you know meet and you know 2200 hours at the pool you know which that is legitimately like yeah um and again you know like like she also said back in the first episode she's not careful enough when it comes to to danger it's one of those things like I get it, but it's not a good idea to go alone, or at the very least, like you should make sure someone else knows that you're there just in case, you know, because this could be the killer, you know. So yeah, and yeah, she's at the pool and she's like, it's so fucking cold, which yeah, uh, you know, I I've never been to one of those, but I hear that's exactly. How you know the the water itself is nice and hot, but everywhere around it is really really cold. It's it feels counterintuitive, but it is true that there are these hot spots in in you know certain cold areas. Anyway, um, let's see. Yes, uh, yeah. So you know she gets in the water and <laughs> yeah goes full submersion, full immersion, and then we hear the noise of the cover starting to go, oh, and she swims and tries to get, but it closes all the way, and, you know, she's, like, hammering on the thing, and we see a shape standing over her, clearly not intending to let her out, to, to you know, uncover the cover, and that's the cliffhanger that they decided to end the episode on so I'm a little torn like on on the one hand this is definitely you know we're there's only two episodes left so it's very smart of them to to get like the intensity to a, a peak I'm really not sure that I believe that she's actually going to die because everything in the show so far we have five episodes into a seven episode run everything has been told from her perspective like when other characters say or do something we're seeing her you know she's either there or she's being told what happened to you know so it it just it feels a little cheap you know um and yeah um I guess that is all that I have to say. Um, let's see. <clears throat> okay, this is like... Okay, so there's some IMDb trivia for this episode. Um, let's see. Um... Right, right. This, yeah, this is, this is not actually a, yeah, that's technically a goof. Uh, 
Anyway, yeah, it points out that, you know, Ava says, you know, if your father took a HIPAA oath, you know I can't talk about this with you, but it, you know, yeah, uh, HIPAA is an American set of laws for patient privacy, not governed or enforced by an oath. The Hippocratic Oath is the, you know, do no harm kind of thing. So, so yeah, they mixed up those two. That would actually, that would really work if it turns out that Ava has not gone through medical school and thus mixes that up. But I think it's just that, like, it was a minor research fail. But... Um, yes, I will try to cover next episode. It'll probably be Thursday next week, so eight days from now. And until then, I leave you with this wonderful troll of a MDB trivia entry for this episode. Darby has pink hair in this episode. In previous episodes, she also had pink hair.